All right, and we're back with another episode of What the Shell Podcast. The... Shell. <laughs> hey, we uh, first off, we want to apologize for being a little late. We had a, a little bit of te- technical difficulties. Always. Um, things that caused us to be a little delayed. Um, but yeah, we're glad to be here. Uh, we took a week off after that awesome episode with Jordan Gray. Yeah. You know, we're both family men. We got a lot of things going on. It's summer. Uh, why don't you give us a little update about you and what's been going on with you, Ed? Oh, personally or just overall? <laughs> uh, why don't you do both, man? Nah, so um, I don't know if you guys know. Well, twins are coming. Um, probably been about five, six weeks, hopefully. The longer they're in the incubator, the better, I guess you could say. Um, but, uh, yeah, so that's pretty much – what I'm trying to hold down the floor with the wife and, you know, make sure all the animals take care of at the same time. And I don't know if you hear my 15 month old also. So we got plenty of animals and plenty of uh, babies on the way. So. <laughs> no, man, you're, you're definitely and, busy, man. Yeah. And um, also, you know, I know we'll touch a little bit based on this a little bit later, but um, also in the process of writing my second book. So we'll get in that a little bit later. So. Yeah, man, you're 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 definitely a busy guy. You got you got how old did you say your daughter is? Fifteen months. Fifteen months with twins on the way. Hey, I, 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 told you, <laughs> I told you this jokingly, but man, it, it might be time for you to trade that truck in and get that minivan. Yeah, right. I've been working on that <laughs> as we speak. <laughs> hey, I, I can see you, man. You're gonna end up being like a cheerleading dad. <laughs> Look, dude, I'll cheer my babies on all the way, man. I hey, there no you go, man. Uh, no shame. A so, little bit about me. One thing that was difficult was um, last week we were celebrating my daughter's birthday. Um, and so she turned four. Uh, been busy trying to deal with a sick turtle. Um, yeah. Thankfully, my vet's going to see her on Monday. And really just trying to enjoy the summer before my wife and I go back to school. You know, we're both school teachers. And so, you know, we started this workout. Um, we've been working out together. It's kind of hard during the school year to actually work out due to our busy yeah. schedules. And so we're trying to, you know, make it a part of our routine. And, uh, yeah, man, just trying to stay busy. Discipline. Discipline. I mean, there everything is about discipline, man. So. Everything is about discipline. Yeah. But yeah, man, why don't we go ahead and get started? Ed, this uh, this week's topic was a topic that uh, you thought about. So why don't you tell yeah. the viewers real quick while I make this walk party uh, what we're going to be talking about, man? Yeah, so pretty much what was on my heart and has been on my heart because it, it is. And I think um, if you're in this the reptile community or even just in wildlife in general, conservation or breeders, whatever you might have it, you you almost instinctively have this, I believe it's all of us inside of us, which is um, you wanna be an influence. And I don't mean that in any kind of self gain or just self kind of, you know, how this world can be now. Um, what I mean by um, influence is how you can be an influence in the community, um, in other people's lives um, for the benefit. Um, because like i think you know ryan mcveigh a couple weeks ago talked about you know what what he i mean he leads everything but like he's like what good is all this knowledge if we don't give it away um so i think how to be an influence is key and there's so many different avenues and ways that you can be an influence it's not that you know one one way is better than the other it's about find your niche find your lane um just like for example this podcast this is a lane this is an avenue cody that you know that where your heart was at so, right, you know, right. and I'm backing you up 100% because, I mean, I love this avenue also. So, you know, you find your lane, find your niche, and how you can make an influence um, to better the wildlife and just the hobby in general, I believe. You know, for they're obviously for not just, um, you know, I, I believe, you know, the biggest issue you, you can probably vouch now this day and age is, you know, so many people have a lack of understanding and not because they're ignorant to it, but they're just, they don't know. And not right. a lot of people are willing to actually be open and transparent enough just to show them the way or show them little things that you might not, and not it, a certain animal might not be your favorite, but it doesn't mean you can't appreciate it for what it right. is. So No, I, I think that definitely hit me hard this week when the governor of Florida signed that bill regarding, you know, the tegus and the iguanas. Like, I mean, yeah. ever since <laughs> we talked to 
Brian, like I've been trying to be pretty active with the, the Florida US art and I was sharing posts and, you know, and thankfully people were commenting and accepting and like saying they were going to send letters. But I, I, I have to admit, I feel like there's probably a lot of people that keep turtles and, you know, other exotic animals that probably felt like this didn't apply to them. You know what I'm saying? But well, they think, and, and they, yeah, they think they're almost like safe zone just because like, you know, mostly everyone's after snakes and, you know, all the in, invasive things that, you know, you don't, you don't realize that, you know, like Ryan said, there it's so close to home and, you know, us being down here, you couldn't even get any more close to home than, you know, yeah, the iguanas are running rampant and they're invasive, but, you know, there's, there's a right way to do things. It only takes, if you really think about it, it only takes a couple of, you know, turtle owners or animal owners to make the wrong decision for for a species to become invasive. Like, yeah. I mean, look at how the red ear slider became invasive. I mean, really, that was people buying five dollar turtles and realizing they get the size of dinner plates and yeah. letting them go. I mean, I remember as a kid. Well, I'm not going to say a kid when I was in high school. I went to visit the University of Miami and they had a pond in the middle of their uni- the university and I look in the pond and there's Oscars swimming around in the in the pond and I'm like Oscars are you serious and they were like you know the size of my arm <laughs> but again it just takes people not being smart you know not being thoughtful in, in the animals they choose to own i mean yeah and they're, they're just yeah and they don't they don't know better they I mean, they're not thinking long term. There, a lot of people, you know, not trying to categorize, but a lot of people, especially now this day and age, they think short term or quick, right? Quick, you know, like oh, like I want that puppy or I want that, and then next thing you know, you don't realize that, like, you could probably vouch in the scenario you're in. Um, you know, when you have a turtle sick, guess what? You still got to take care of it. You still got to get the antibodies. You still, you have to, and that's just half the battle. I mean, just. <laughs> You know, for the long haul, you're talking about a turtle that lives two, three times longer than a dog. (laughs) I think another thing is like, man, you know, if I'm completely honest, the turtle that's sick, I mean, I paid a couple thousand bucks for this turtle. And so, like, I mean, I'm going to spend the money to take her to the vet. Like, and I I sat there and I was like, would I take a $20 turtle? And the answer is yes, because I have taken a $20 turtle to the vet, like. If you're not going to take care of your animals in every regard, like you shouldn't own them. You know, it's like you you make sure your dog has taken flea medicine and, and, you know, heartworm medicine. Like sometimes you're going to have to take your turtle to the vet. Like it's not as as simple as throw them in water and watch them grow. (laughs) No, no. I mean, but, but yeah, we, I mean, we can go on. I think that's actually a, um a really good topic down the road and you know more probably more recently you know to talk about with the whole no i uh, get a little bit more into that i reached out to a couple of people um that i that i've seen you know in the different reptile groups that are here in florida Mm -hmm. that that i'm going to work on getting on the show eventually but i do want to get into our our topic about influence yeah Um, let's do it and so i guess i'll start with the podcast and then I'll let you talk about your books and then we'll start, you know, add the two people, the two guests that we wanted to talk about how they're being influenced. So, yeah, yeah definitely. if I think about the podcast and why I really did the podcast, um, it really came down to two things. One, I was really impressed with the Turtle Room podcast. Um, I watch all their podcasts um, and when I need information, like those guys are super cool. Like they don't treat me like I'm inferior. Or anything, even though they've been, you know, in the turtle game for years. And so, like, it kind of inspired me, like, hey, if they could do it, and if people can make podcasts about, like, eating pizza rolls or, you know, like, the craziest things they have podcasts about, why can't I? They got a million views. (laughs) Right, right. Like, I mean, at first I was worried. I was like, dude, nobody's going to watch me talk about turtles. Like, I'm not a herpetologist. I'm not a biologist. Like, I'm none of these things. I'm a school teacher. But then I was like, you know what? Like, if we sit here with the idea that we can just be silenced or, like, we have to hide what we're passionate about, like, we'll never enjoy life. Like, life is too short. And so I was like, all right, so I want to do a podcast. And I talked to a couple people, and they're like, 
oh yeah, that'd be cool. Um, and so I was like, all right, what are we going to talk about? And I mean, honestly, I really didn't have a plan after episode one, but things just fall in line and you find things to talk about. Like, especially with the coronavirus, it was like, people need somewhere to talk. People aren't socializing. And, and that was the view or the idea I had for this podcast. I will say that lately there hasn't been as much conversation in the comments as I would like. I would prefer, you know, viewers like engaged, asking questions, wanting to be on the show. Like that's my view. But I realized that people are busy and they have their lives. And so the plan is to like over time add those guests that are loyal, that want to be a part of the community and have them on the show. I mean, people, people like, like Ryan, I mean, people yeah. that you think so highly of them, which we all do, but he said it himself, he's just a guy that loves animals that likes to share about animals. <laughs> no, like one of one of the future uh, guests is is a guy I actually met in my city. He owns two reptile stores now. Like he's my age and owns two reptile stores. Like I don't think there's anybody that breeds reptiles and hasn't had the thought in their mind, like, dude, it would be awesome to have a reptile store. Like yeah. <laughs> for me, I'm like, I don't I don't mess with snakes. So that's not happening for me. Like I don't I don't foresee a turtle store being successful. But like, I mean, I wanted to get him on the show, man. Like clearly yeah. you've taken a path that was different from a lot of us. Like that's your yeah. way of being an influence, you know, like people coming in who are afraid of snakes and you can take those snakes and you know, get rid of their fears. You can sell them, you can sell them the proper habitats, you know, things of that nature. Yeah. I think it is funny and I've I haven't told anybody this. Um, somebody asked me how I came up with what the show. Um, honestly, I bought a magnet from Party City by <laughs> and the magnet had a turtle with a phone and it said shelfie. <laughs> taking a shelfie. And I was like, there like you you can play on the word shell a lot if you really think about it. Like yeah. So I was like, me and my wife were just sitting there when I told her I wanted to do the podcast. I was like, man, what the shell? I was like, that's it. Like, that's what I have for yeah. you. Aha uh -huh. uh -huh moment. <laughs> yeah, it was like an aha uh -huh moment. And I mean, from there, I mean, who knows? We're on episode seven. Maybe we only have 10. You know, I don't think that'll be the case as I have guests lined up. But I'm, I'm yeah. not putting a limit to it, man. You know, like, as long as I have the time and people are willing to watch, we got six people right now, and you know what? I appreciate each of those six people, you know, like. Well, I mean, exactly. I mean yeah, and you got to take each person for who they are, you know. What I mean, like I, like I always used to say, that's, I mean, going back from, you know, going to college and the wildlife resource management and my, um, growing up in the outdoors and all I ever wanted to be was in the outdoors and hunting and fishing. Um and my mentality changed once I got to um, college, when I started working on my degree and realizing that um, I started getting into uh, um, tour guides and um, presentations like for raptors and for um, snakes and venomous snakes. And I was doing all kinds of different educational programs and only because it was part of the part of the class. But um, man, I realized like, when you when you're standing there either with a copperhead or a timber rattlesnake or um i got or, 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 or i got one of them sleeves on you know with the leash holding a red-tailed hawk or a barred owl and seeing these whether young or old i mean these people their faces just light up and they're just like holding they're they're hanging on to every word that you're saying and realizing something hit me like your aha moment it hit me uh, and i'm like like this is what i want to do like right. i don't know how or what or what how's and how it's gonna happen but like this is what i want to do i want to i want to share and my same love because that's, that's all what it's all about you can have all the knowledge in the world and you don't even have to have all the knowledge in the world you just gotta have the passion and the drive and the right motive of heart and right. you can influence one person's life i mean you never know what that person can go on to do and accomplish. You look at Jordan Gray. I mean, you look at all these different people. You don't. You you think they didn't have some influence in that moment in their life when they were younger that sparked that either? 
No, even if I think back to like a uh, previous podcast where you talked about, you know, what made you want to start keeping Terrapins. I mean, you you had a moment with Terrapins as a kid. You're like, crap, like I'm going to keep these. Terpins. You know, it's like I, I'm, I'm really interested and I'd really like you to tell um, the viewers about your book, man, and, and, and really dive into why you did your book. I mean, for those. So, that- yeah, um, honestly. I never planned to ever write a book um, just because that's almost a scary thing in and of itself to think about. Like, (laughs) and like, who am I to write a book, you know, that anyone wants to read. And um, this was about what, two and two years ago. Um, And actually it happened because I'm one of those guys where I like real, real raw stuff, like real storylines, like things that are actually realistic, not just, you know, fiction. Um, yeah. and it just so happened that when Hurricane Irma hit, um, me and my wife went down to the beach, our favorite spot on the beach, and we actually found a baby sea turtle, Greenback, um, and we were able to, you know, call FWC and say, hey, what do you want, to, want us to do with this? And um, they said, you know, the best thing you can do is just let it go. So took a video of it and just, you know, let it go and watch it, you know, go out to sea and... Um, at that moment, seeing all kinds of destruction and you know, clutter and broken eggshells and seeing all this stuff and seeing this glimmer of hope, seeing this baby turtle go out to sea. Um, when I went, when I came home, and I, it was one of those nights after, shortly after, you know, it, it just got pressed to my heart. Like, you know, this is this is real. This is a story. You know, right. that you know, I don't that I actually lived, and I want to share this hope with the world. So I began writing a storybook about Champ out to sea. Champ is actually, you know, um, well, my grandfather, my grandfather used to call me, um, you know, Champ, you know, back in the day when I was a little young and, you know, before he passed away. And um, so that it's it really sentimental to me. And that was a tribute to him for what he's done in my life. So, um, so yeah, I mean, I just it took me about a year and a half process between illustration and all that good stuff that comes into a book. Writing a story is the easy part, <laughs> right, right. you know, but, um, so yeah, man, and, and it just transformed over time. But in a year and a half, I had a hard copy sit in my hand. And mind you, this was this was before even my daughter was even a, a glimmer in the eye. Like so, I was halfway into writing a book when my I, we we found out we were pregnant, and I was like, it, that just gave me so much more. Like now, not not only did I have a, a purpose, but I had a reason now why why I want to push through and actually get this out because I'm thinking about the future and that this goes into influence to where, yeah, I had an influence and a drive to, um, you know, share this with the world. But right. now, but now people don't realize that being an influence doesn't mean you, you have to have a thousand, 200 or 10 followers. Being an influence is what you, me, and what so many of us, you know, that we know in our circle and our community is just by sharing with your family, your loved ones, your daughter, your children. And that is the biggest, that's the most critical influence that you could ever be that will go on for generations because that is your lineage. That is your, that is you, you know. Um, it, it's, whether- it's funny you say that, man, because in, in the education field, uh, we use a term, you know, like, Every child is going to have a teacher that plants the seed, and then they're going to have teachers that water the seed. Yeah. And the seed might not get planted in kindergarten or first grade, but the hope is that by the time they graduate high school, they'll have had a teacher that planted a seed, and they'll have teachers that pour into that seed to help them grow. And that's the way teachers influence, you know, like yeah. amongst the other million jobs that we're not going to get started that teachers have. But like you're yeah, my right. Wife, my wife's a science teacher, so I, I get it, bro. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like even if I don't, I mean, ideally, I'd love to reach all 24 of my students every year. But the realization is, some of them, I might not be that bond that that reaches them. Yeah. And it's the same thing, man. Like yeah. if we set our goal to reach everybody, you'll never reach anybody. You know, yeah. like. And you gotta, and the biggest thing that if you if you're trying to reach everyone, which isn't a bad you know, motive, but it is because you can sometimes lose your authenticity and why you're doing it in the first place. So it's real, it's real um, important and critical that 
if you get the right mind frame and you're just doing it because you're just like us, yeah, I mean, we're on here. We're not looking for a million views or followers and all this crap. I mean, we're just, Hey, look, you know, we're sharing how what's changed our lives and what can impact other people's lives. And right. Look, if you can get some nuggets from this, that, that, then we did our job. I mean, right. to be honest with you and, and worst case scenario is you and me got to sit down and have a, a good conversation, which we have all the time. And, but you know, it's, <laughs> it's 13 views though. Yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, yes. The other thing I want you to talk about is your new book. And then, you know, we, you and I talked about, you know, trying to um, auction off your first book so that, you know, I, I'll let you go into details, but I know you want to donate the funds somewhere to be useful. Yeah. And I mean, why don't, why don't you tell them about it, man? Yeah, so, I mean, you can go to my website, rockhardfaith.com, and actually, I mean, we should have a link in one of our posts if you go to Swamp Life, Swamp Life Reptiles on Instagram or Facebook. Um, and click on the link, and you'll see I have the whole bio of the book. I have the video of actual video from that point um, and all that good stuff. And, um, so, you know, my hard drive is to uh, – you know, auction off the book, you know, I don't care whether it's five, 10 or whatever dollars. I mean, the biggest reason is the purpose behind it. And because, you know, if anyone watched any of our previous podcasts, our heart is really leaning to team with, you know, US ARC. Um, and that's where I want to give, like, you know, Ryan McVeigh said, he was like, you know, if everyone in the community or whatever owned like a turtle or something gave $5 a month or something like that, uh, we would be well beyond any kind of mean, well means to like be in a, a battle against, you know, the giants that we are facing to actually just keep our animals at home. Right. Um, so, you know, you guys uh, can comment on this video or comment on one of our posts, um, get with us, you know, any, any sort of way, if you want to get back. And even if you want the book, just in general, um, it doesn't matter to me. I mean, any, any sales, you know, that are made for this podcast just in general it doesn't even have to be one book um i won't limit it to one and all the funds will go there um so i was yeah. gonna say the plan was to have my copy of your book sitting next to me but it would require me to go into my daughter's room into her library and we <laughs> have a library for my daughter and your book is in her library oh uh, man I, I was slipping man i had it right outside my door too i should grab I should hey, I should I'm prepared. Prepared. get up man i got up too much in the jordan gray <laughs> podcast when i rewatched it so um but yeah, yeah man, i'm not gonna lie it definitely surprised me um when i got the book like i think what did your daughter what, what did your daughter think like what was her reaction and i'm just oh. getting a perspective here on my daughter's big thing was she liked the pictures. Um, and obviously, all right, a little bit about my daughter. My daughter's only four, but she's on the verge of reading already. Um, and so for a four-year-old, that like that's really surprising. I mean, she knows 50, almost 40, I'd say. Let me not say 50, almost 40 sight words, which are like the first couple words, you know, the first group of words that you'll need to know for reading. Yeah. And so there's there's plenty of books that she can read certain words. Um, and so with your book, I think something that helped was the illustrations are so large um, and they're so colorful, like that it kept her attention. Um, <laughs> and so like, she was like, look, daddy, a baby turtle. <laughs> and then she was starting to try to make its own story about the turtle. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so like, my daughter's very excited about school and learning. So I had to like slow her down. Like, listen, I'm going to the actual story. Um, but, but she definitely loved it. And like, I had the magnet and things of that. So she'll point to the turtle. Um, and in her mind, every turtle is a girl. It doesn't, it does not matter. <laughs> so, I mean, and, and that's, and that, honestly, and that's how I want to portray it, you know, and, that, and you can, you can read it as quick as you want, but you, or you can just, make it as theatrical as you want right you know it's a good quick bedtime story or it can be a an experience and then at the end you can say hey look you can actually watch the video also and see because people i want people to connect to it you know and connect right. to things and which brings me to <clears throat> my second book which um has been on my heart probably even longer than the first one the first one was just that's what came you know inspiration first but the 
the second one, um, I'm glad it happened that way because, you know, when my daughter was born, she was at that early or young stage, she, she didn't move much. It didn't do much, I guess you could say, obviously. So yeah. it was perfect just to read her a little story, you know, and she could just sit there and on her, on your lap and she didn't, she wasn't in that growing, moving, touching, ripping phase. Um, your daughter's already past that. Probably at least mine is on that phase right now. She needs to do stuff at 15 months. Hey, she is not past it, bro. <laughs> yeah, full really. on water gun war. <laughs> well, that's different, man. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, what? what's helped me transfer from my first book to my second book is realizing, even though, yeah, I have twins on the way, but that's why I'm my first book, okay? Um, I realize, you know, I'm, I'm reading the engagement of my daughter and how she acts and how she does in her phases. So I'm realizing that, okay, I need to give them something, you guys something more than just a story, um, but not take away from being actively involved. So the second book is actually going to be um, all Terrapins, all Diamondback Terrapins. So for all you... DBT lovers out there in, our, in the Diamondback community, this book is going to be, I know how Steven has that priceless gem from him and James, the, his book. This book, I mean, um, the illustration and the people I have work on it, it's it's going to be barred none. And I hope this thing goes even worldwide with the community that we have. Because um, I realized not a lot of people are actually how do you have so many, the most magnificent turtle, but there's not much out there about them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just from books to just, YouTube, just any, bro. even on any, YouTube. Yeah. Anything. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to put my most, my most passionate, you know, animal that I'm passionate about, which is a Dimeback Terrapin. And I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to blow them up. And I'm, and I'm, when I say blow up, I've Big got, so, I got, yeah, I got, so, I got, I got so many people and partnerships and things that I'm just going to be able to get something in the hands of a, something that adults will like and children and something that the parents can actually do with their children and actively engage from, you know, um, so it's going to be an activity book. So it's going to be mazes and coloring and stickers and yeah stickers okay come on so i'm gonna have and i'm gonna go over all the subspecies i mean i'm gonna it's it's gonna be amazing um and um i'm excited um i got the illustrations working in a platform so i don't know i can't give exact time frame because i kind of let it ride as it goes but, greatness man no you know and um if I, you would have told me it took a year and a half to do that first one i'd be like crap do i really want to spend a year and a half doing this it, it doesn't matter you know, what matters is the motive of why I'm doing it. So it's for you guys in the community to be able to share with your family and share with your children and the parents are, and whether you're a parent or not, you're going to love this book. Hey, man, I'm, <laughs> I'm 27 and I'm going to be coloring this shit. <laughs> and, and look, and look, and, and one more aspect that I want to touch on is that I'm not just going to have... I'm, the way of I'm formulating this book is going to be cool and different probably from anyone that's ever done because most of the time you just see coloring and, and all this stuff. And what I wanted to do to make that personal touch about it was that every turtle that's going to actually be a part of this book has a name, okay. has a personality. And, and I'm not talking about imaginative fic, uh, fiction, you know, kind of character. I'm talking about people's pets right that i've we've all brought in together to formulate this book they actually have names these are real turtles that look at any point you can go to this person's website hey, man, or, if uh if you <laughs> a turtle man i'd highly encourage you to use pictures of my turtle meg meg uh, yeah meg my concentric female probably my favorite turtle i can't lie well then, you gotta you gotta send a picture and and actually, how about that? That's actually a cool idea. How about anybody anybody that actually has cool pictures of terrapins or anything? If you give me enough inspiration, you not say you even got a cool enough turtle, but you know, <laughs> I, I even challenge you. Hey, yeah, post it up, and you never know, I might get a shot at my book. No, that'd be awesome, man. <laughs> Definitely be awesome. Uh, so yeah, man, we talked a little bit about your book. We talked about our podcast. 
But now we kind of want to get on to um, the two guests that we brought on for today. And yeah. the same thing I told them, like, these are two individuals that are eventually have their own episode. So we're not going to, like, dive into too much turtle talk. But I did want to talk about, you know, like, why they've started the platform that they've started and their influence. And so let's go ahead and bring on our first one. Let's go ahead and bring on Dan the Guppy Man. Hello. Thank you for being on there today. Hey, what's happening? Hey, y'all. Thank you for having me on. No, man. It's a pleasure. Yeah, we mentioned you enough throughout the series. Man. We did, so, man. We did. So yeah, why don't you ask him that uh, influence question that you came up with? Yeah, so what started you to actually, you know, what, what is your lane and what's your avenue as far as being influenced? What's kind of, you know, for people that don't even know you, mm -hmm. where did it stem from? How did it like almost birth and almost where you're at now, where even long term, where is it leading you? Yeah, so it started with me being really little, real young. And I say that it was like 10 years ago. Um, and I'm going on YouTube, like following all these people, like watching all these dudes and watching all their turtle setups and being like, I need, I remember pestering my parents. Like I got to go to the fish store. I need to get driftwood. Like I need this stuff. Like this guy, <laughs> this one guy on, on YouTube said that I, that I should <laughs> make that this might make my turtle a little bit happier. So like I need this. Um, and so I essentially grew up watching so much like turtle tube and there was like a couple main guys on there at the time but youtube wasn't huge then and um so basically now um, and by the way that was like yesterday man because i don't think people know how how young you are like i'm young but you're young still yeah I'll, i'm 21 so it was like i'm like a little 10 year old kid like watching oh man i'm people. thinking 10 years old i'm like i'm, a, I'm, yeah. I'm still young too like i'm i'm hitting 30 this year but i mean Still young. Yeah, no, no, no. We're all, we're all good. We're good until 40. Otherwise, we're all in the same group. It's all good. Age is just a number, man, if you let it. Yeah, exactly. No, we're fine. Um, <laughs> so I remember just like watching these guys. I'm like, um, and, and now at least that I got like a little bit older. I was like, I can do that. Um, I want to help young people, the little Dan's everywhere that are like looking for turtle information and whatnot. And I want to help people understand that you don't have to break the bank. You don't have to be spending hundreds or thousands of dollars on enclosures, on setups, on things to make sure that your turtle has a happy and like fulfilled life. Um, and so I, I wanted to just try to get on there and sort of make some entertaining stuff. And also because I have fun with it, um, and just try to express as best as I can what I've learned over the years, because I mean, there's plenty of things that I've learned that, that people say, you have to do this. Oh, you have to do this. And, and, um, it's not necessarily true. No one person knows every one thing. So I just want to be another source of information for people, yeah. um, because you shouldn't be getting your information from one source. I tell people that when they watch my, if they watch my videos, I say, don't go, like, okay, you're here, you're watching this video about, I don't know, uh, getting a new turtle. Cool. Go here, go to the turtle girl, go to Greg's turtle. Hive. And like go to all these other resources, like do your, your research. Um, but I, I basically want people to learn what I have learned, but in like one place. I yeah, have a question for you. Yeah. What, um, how long ago did you start your YouTube channel and how many times did you delete your first video? Cody, if you go to youtube.com, my, my brother and I just talked about this. You go to youtube.com slash Dan the Guppy Man, you hit videos, you scroll all the way down, you find my first video. Never deleted it. I kept it up. I kept up my, I have about seven videos from 2011. Okay. 2011, um, my first one was just on guppies. My second video was just like guppy fry because I was breeding guppies at that point. Um, I remember I was 13 years old and I had a whole breeding setup. I had hundreds of guppies. It was okay, insane. so that, that makes total sense. Like I yeah. didn't even know that. I thought you were talking about all the dams in the world. I, I thought you had a little guppy followers. And, <laughs> no. The, <laughs> and then it all started, man. Yeah, so that's where it started. So I, I, my brother said take it down. It's more professional if you don't have it. But I think it shows people where I came from. Look, I was oh, a dude. stupid kid who had no idea what I was doing. 
you know, not stop you, but I mean, most people know this guy, but Justin Kabilka, you know, in the snakes and the breeding ball pythons. I mean, he's like the top dog. He posted his very first one and he like shares in, you see him. He is like, uh, he don't uh, say he doesn't know a thing, but like, man, seeing where he's progressed in his like own college dorm room to mm -hmm. now the top dog in the breeding ball pythons community just built like a thousand, a couple thousand square foot building you know it's just it's amazing what drive and you know not caring what people think about you mm -hmm. you know because because i'm sure you've had your your fair share especially in the social media realm and you know the video realm that you know you have your you know people Peter. this and that but but i mean and i'm sure it's hope i mean if you've kept it up to where you're at now you've only let it fuel you and and learn and grow from that you know mm -hmm. and and just be able to connect with your audience more because I feel like, you know, only certain people are going to connect with certain people. And that's no harm, no foul either. Exactly. Exactly. And you also can't let the uh, thumbs down thing on your videos uh, bother you. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I look forward to it, actually. Uh, I sort of feel uncomfortable if there's not even a single dislike because I'm like, I'm not part. Someone needs to not like this. Someone <laughs> out there doesn't like this. I think I heard that before, too. Yeah. It's I, like I have to admit <laughs> something, too. You dislike uh, them all. <laughs> no, no, no. My favorite one of your videos is actually the one where you dressed up like a chef with the shrimp <laughs> and the crab. Oh, my God. And so I got to make sure you tell me, you post the link that one, so I, I need to make sure. Hey, I man, I, I can't lie. Whenever whenever I get, like, really uh, – down and in the blues and yeah look forward like stuff. you want something good <laughs> yeah i was like let me go watch that video of dan dressed up like chef boyer d again like dude you know and it's crazy you say that kind of stuff in the way you say it because i just had my you know my cpr recertification yesterday and a guy was like better than any of the let any of the instructors in the past i've had and he said one thing he was a fast talker but the one thing that was just like boom hit me and he was like he's because he was very good at engaging and making people laugh and learning mm -hmm. and he was like dude he said if you ain't laughing you ain't learning boom and i'm like well come on now you know what i'm yeah. saying yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly yeah i feel like that hit, that that hits different because i mean you you if you're that's what i always thought if you're entertained you're gonna learn this stuff's yep. gonna stick if yep. i'm like let me tell you that video it's probably my favorite video to this day. It is the most fun. I like, it was just so much fun. It was and so stupid. Even, <laughs> even the way the turtles were destroying the food was funny to me. <laughs> and, and the funny thing is like Cody, like you wouldn't even probably even remember who, what his name is, but you remember how you made you feel and you just remember the chef kind of thing. Like, so yeah. and it goes to show you, it's like, it, it doesn't matter what, if they remember your name, it's not about you. It's a it's it's a matter about what you left behind. What did you did you exactly. leave a mark? Did you leave a mark? Did you leave something that look down the road they're gonna be like, oh, I remember that or this or that. You sure. Know, it's, and they'll remember like I don't know. Next time they're out in the store, they're looking for something. They say, Hey, that stupid turtle chef guy. You know, he said make it make it make it natural. You know, make the foods as natural as possible. Try to get exit like uh, whatever you can that as closely replicates a wild diet as you can. Yeah. Uh, and so even if that like stupid little bit helps someone like helps one person out there it's worth it like yeah. entirely and you're in a really time consuming yeah. realm also man with the whole editing and youtube i mean that you have to really you have to really love you know and and maybe not the editing part as much as doing it but you have to be dedicated <laughs> and committed <laughs> oh yeah yeah, and it's fun because it used to take days, days to get out one video that is subpar. And now, I mean, I just filmed today uh, at 3 o'clock I started, and I've been grinding since then, and I'll have my video out today, hopefully, by like 9-ish, like 9, 9.30. So it's yeah, just bro. like – it's <laughs> Exactly. It's uh, – I mean, it's fun. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. But – um. You have to you have to enjoy some of it. It's not all bad. I love it. I mean, yeah. even like when you're just sitting down grinding out an edit, like I don't know, it's rewarding, I should say. And you almost learn more by yourself as you go, even though you learn a little bit of your quirks and this and that. But you know, oh yeah, you probably learn more by yourself than most people learn about you in that video. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I know. I learned about how much I I lose it off camera. I'll, like the turtles will all be biting me. I'm like. Jesus, bleep, bleep, like it would all be bleeped out. Like, stop biting me. It's so funny. <laughs>
But people oh, want real concept. raw, man. They don't want yeah. like, oh, you got to cut that out because that maybe will just be, I don't know, too dramatic. Well, um, freaking put the dramatic in, man. People want to be like, dude, this dude's crazy. Or, you know, okay, I can vibe this with this dude. And I can actually watch a minute longer just because he did that. <laughs> exactly. And that's what I'm sort of trying to do, like trickle in. People want to understand. People, I mean, I don't think most people understand. Like, I'm batshit. So, um, I, I, it's sort of fun when I can like just sort of start to slowly let some of like weirdness like trickle in and I try to make every video just like a little bit weird. Um, but yeah, definitely. Um, I, I try to do that at least a little bit per video, like put in something real, something legit. Um, if something looks like crap, I show it. Because yeah. No, man, I, I definitely think you, uh, you do a good job and we're definitely going to put the link for your new video. If you release it tonight, we'll put it um, in the link for this video um, yeah, thank you. on YouTube and Facebook. Um, I did want to tell you, we, we are going to cut you off and bring on Greg in just a second. If you want to stay on and be a part of Guess That Turtle, um, just stay where you were before we added you. Yeah, and okay. We'll add you back on for Guess That Turtle if you're interested, man. I'm always we interested. We appreciate you for coming on. And yeah, brother. I'm sure yeah. when we have the episode – you know, talking all about Dan the Guppy Man and what you're working on in the future, man. I'm sure we'll be talking in circles, man. Oh uh, yeah, we know the origin and we know a little bit of up to date. You know, mm-hmm. make yeah. sure you bring that 13 year old picture of Dan as well. <laughs> we we want to laugh. God. Oh God, uh, yeah, I'll go. Do it. Thank you guys for having me on. All right, man. <laughs> we appreciate it. Thanks again. anytime. I will. All right, let's go ahead and add our other guest that's coming on to talk about his platform. Greg, man, thanks for coming on. We appreciate you. Can you hear us? What's up? Hello, Ed. What's happening, brother? Good. Can you hear me? Yeah, we we can hear you. Yeah, it's a little bit better when you scoot a little closer. But yeah, man, Ed, yeah, (laughs) can you hear me now? But yeah, Ed, go ahead and ask the question, man. Did you hear me, Ed? What's that? I said, go ahead and ask your question. This was your idea, my friend. Uh, so where did you get started? Because, I mean, I know you're actually uh, – you have a you have a very special niche as far as even what you actually – what you work with and stuff also. So kind of where did the origin of, you know, what species you like to work with and what prompted you to actually start to actually want to share – what you've been given and what you're passionate about actually to the world. Like what did you get? Like, was it like a moment to you realize like, you know, that we all have like, you know, man, like, you know, I don't, I don't care uh, what people think or like, I just, I just want to share, you know? Yeah. I, um, I've been keeping turtles since I think my first turtle was in 1987. That was a four box. Later. <laughs> yeah. And then like later that same year was like a red eared slider. So I've been keeping turtles since then. My dad had box turtles when he was a kid and he was the one that told me the better way to do it was outside and that he would get babies every year and all that stuff. So um, kind of throughout the 90s and 2000s, keeping turtles, I was always working towards more and more outdoor stuff. And, you know, my parents switched jobs a lot and I moved around a lot. I started off living in Florida and, you know, now I live up here in Atlanta. Um, And in the early 2000s, there was Austin's turtle page and they had um turtleforum.com and i was really active on the forums and they were creating like care sheets and stuff like that and i would provide them a lot of photos um care advice i was also active in like the turtle id forums and it was a really good deal because it was a lot of the guys that started the turtle room were guys from turtle forum and so we would all kind of get on there and share information so you know i i wanted to be a teacher but the problem was, is, you know, I, I, my brain was so all over the place. I went to school for television production and I spent the 2000s, you know, skateboarding all the time and traveling around skateboarding. And it was hard to pin myself down to, to go back to school to be a teacher. So, um, but I've always had a desire to share information and, and help people out whenever I can. So around the time Facebook showed up, the forum started to kind of die out. And I started, I think, playing around with a, a herping youtube channel i had a skateboarding channel back in the early 2000s but like i started a herping one a few years back and i started like just kind of putting stuff i'd find on there and then i started the one that i have now um last year i went to pondemonium 
Uh, it's like Aquascapes event mm -hmm. that they put on every year. And Greg had invited me up there because we had talked on Instagram. And I went up there and I'm friends with Kenan from Camp Kenan. And so I hung out with him for the whole weekend. And um, there was like Blake from Blake's Exotic Animal Ranch. Uh, Tanner from Serpent Design was there. And so, um, and, you know, I was helping Kenan film an episode up there. So I was kind of watching everybody go around doing this YouTube stuff. And, you know, if you've seen the Aquascape guys, you know, they're all doing YouTube stuff. So yeah. it was it was goofy to me, but it also looked kind of fun, you know, watching these guys run around with cameras and vlogging and filming all this stuff. And you know, I went to school for television production. Like, how were they filming? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a lot, a lot of them were doing that. And it, it was just cool. Like, like I said, I have a background in producing television shows and music videos and skate videos and stuff. So it was kind of in my lane anyway. And um, I remember me and Ken were riding with uh, one of the ladies that runs Aquascape. And she asked me like, oh, do you have like a popular YouTube channel? I was like, no, I have one that has like five subscribers. And I was like, I have an Instagram that has like maybe 500, you know, followers. I was like, I don't, nobody really, nobody really knows who I am. I was like, I'm just hanging out. And then Kenan told me, he was like, just, he's like, just do the YouTube channel, dude. And he's like, just, he's like, do it your way. Like show the stuff that you do. And, you know, and, and so when I came back from there, I just was like kind of amped up to do it. And I started at the time, like I said, I was already sitting on a handful of videos and I had a handful of subscribers. And then I was just like, you know what? I, I want to kind of do it my way. And it, I would say it took maybe two or three months to kind of get it to looking the way it looks now. Like, you know, I have a specific way that I film things and I edit things. And then um, I try to put out at least two videos every week, sometimes three. That's every Friday is a herping <laughs> video. So every week I'm in the field and finding stuff. And then in addition to that, I'm filming stuff, you know, here at the house. And then when you could travel, I would travel and try and show other people setups and stuff like that. So that was like kind of my goal. And I was just like, I just wanted to kind of like just grind at it because, you know, my, my main job is I'm a wedding photographer and videographer. So, you know, I'd work on the weekends and then, you know, I have all week to, you know, create content that hopefully people find helpful and, you know, can create more awareness and, um, you know, be fun to watch. You know, that's the other thing is like you guys were talking about with Dan is make it fun. Yeah. What, what, um, cause I know sometimes, you know, especially man, if you put two, three videos out a week, that's a, that's, that's, that's impressive. So uh, where does your inspiration come from to where, you know, what to, you know, throw out there content wise? Like, is it something um, that, you know, like you learn or just something that you think you feel like, you know, people want to learn about or like, how does it hit you every week? Um, yeah, like coming up with new stuff. I mean, it, it's not hard for me to want to do it just because I'm a psycho and I just yeah. want to constantly be doing stuff. But um, <laughs> the content, like the herping content is easy because it's like I just go out and film myself doing what I'm going to be doing anyway. Okay. Um, sometimes I'll have like a specific goal. Like I've done episodes where I specifically look for like a Sewanee alligator snapper or, you know, something specific like that. And then sometimes it's just like, I'm going to Alabama. Let's, you know, see what happens there. So, um, <laughs> but with the, with the content at the house, I have to look at what's going to be entertaining versus what is there like a need for it? You know, so, yeah. you know, I, I've done ones, um, my, and like my most popular videos are ones that are called like uh, best pet turtle. And I talk about turtles that I think are if across the board, probably both owner and turtle get a fair shake. And I think that like musk turtles work out really good. Eastern painted turtles work out really good because they're not, they're easy to house. They're really forgiving. They can handle good, you know, good yeah. or bad weather. So I, I've been doing the best pet turtle ones and then, you know, stuff like how to sex your turtle, how to, you know, feed your turtle natural foods, which is something I'm big on. So I just kind of look at things that are easy for people to do themselves that just maybe they need to see somebody else do it to, cause you know, there's been plenty of things where I, you know, it took me seeing somebody else do it to be like, Oh, okay, I can do this. Yeah. So that's, I, I'm just trying to basically make videos saying, you know, you can do this and I encourage people to, you know, leave comments and I have yeah. really awesome people that watch my videos and they leave really good comments. I have, a, I have a couple people that leave shitty comments and I like that too. So. <laughs> Give us something to talk about next week. <laughs> hey, let, me, let me ask you a question. How did you come up with the name Greg's Turtle Haven? Like, yeah, we found out Guppy. Uh, so. We found out the uh, Guppy so, story. We found out the uh, what the tail story. We got to know the Turtle Haven story. Well, I think 
I think it started on Instagram first because my Instagram, if you go back far enough on it, like if you go back to the first posts, it was about, it was an Instagram just for my Burmese mountain tortoise. And her name is butthole because she doesn't have a tail. She just has a butthole. As long as she comes, it just shoots out. So I made this Instagram and it was you just You can't make that up, bro. So yeah, Sorry. So Instagram called butthole the tortoise. And then I started kind of posting more once I moved into this house. And yeah, I have a lot of hawks. I don't know if you can hear that. I yeah, yeah. I have hawks um, too, bro. I knew exactly. Dude, that's as natural as you're gonna get. <laughs> yeah, it's a hawks or four wheelers. It's always one or the other. Um, and so like I I had moved into this house and I was like, okay, I have this amount of space. I'm just gonna keep building stuff. And then it was just like, I don't know, somewhere along the line, I just thought like, oh, this is like maybe my parents came over or something. They're like, oh, you got a little turtle haven. And I was like, yeah, it's Greg's turtle haven. Then I think I changed my Instagram to that. And then <laughs> when I came back from, I think when I came back from Pondemonium, I was like, yeah, that's a good name to use for a, a YouTube channel. And so I, it stuck. And it's funny because everybody thinks it's Greg's turtle heaven. So <laughs> and they can't read. <laughs> heaven yeah, yeah. For some reason, Greg from Aquascape always, he's like, yeah, yeah, Greg's turtle heaven. And I'm like, yeah, it's haven, but yeah, too. <laughs> You know, it's pretty cool that, you know, between Cody, his aha moment, Dan's, you know, yours, like, you know, it's not like you like strain to come up with something. It just happened naturally, organically, because it's what yeah. you do and it's what you love. And that's how you know that it's real and raw. You know, it's not, you know, I got to think of something yeah. cool, you know, it's, this is who I am. And <laughs> I, I, think, yeah, I think if you just kind of, if you just relax and just let life happen, it'll just steer you the right way. It's, it's a river and you're just floating down it. And, yeah. you know, sometimes you bump off a rock here or there. And, but for the most part, if you go with the flow, you're going to get where you're going. And detour. Um, <laughs> yeah. It just, you know, I, I think even with, with the podcast you guys are doing, it's the same thing. You know, you start off and, you know, once you, once you start getting going and it, it snowballs and it keeps building and, you know, it just becomes something more, you know, it's yeah. It, yeah. I think either way, whether you're doing a YouTube channel and Instagram, a podcast, I think sharing information is so huge. Like when I was a kid, you didn't have the internet. Like all we had were books and I had to go yeah. to the library and check out books. And I was such a little prick. I was just like, they're mine now. <laughs> so I have like all these books that I never returned to the library. <laughs> I got tired. I got tired of checking the same books out over again. So like, but we didn't have the internet and I just wanted to learn. But now we have this awesome ability with YouTube, Instagram, yeah. Facebook, podcasts. Every one of us has the ability to share what we know, you know, and it's only, in my opinion, it's only going to benefit our, not only ourselves, which is selfish, but it's going to benefit the turtles. Yeah. And I think that's what, what we got to put first. Yeah. So. And, you know, I think Cody, you can vouch like it's, it's crazy that, you know, we're dealing with this much stuff in the world right now what's going on and even fighting to keep our animals i mean like how crazy is that you know so you know it's not like almost our podcast is even like taken like a a special niche as far as you know getting the people that are involved in the fight and people that are actually have influence like this is all about influence people are bringing people with influence to be able to actually like look you know band together and actually you know if you got a passion for this if you got a drive for this well contribute you know what i'm saying whether it's what you do and you love or even like you know within usr you know like contribute and have each other's back it's not about turtles versus snakes versus this or versus that it's like look we're all in it for the same motive and you know the same right of heart i mean so i think that's critical now any more days is to really really get actively involved and not just for you know the self kind of way but just look if you got a platform use it and benefit the animal because like so many people out there, you know, they might not, I mean, if they find, if they find an animal that they're in love with, I mean, then they're going to realize, oh man, like I can lose this ability. Well, how can we change that? You know? Well, there I think there's also, there's also a spectrum, you know, there's, you can be all the way on one end of the spectrum and you're strictly involved in the, the captivity and husbandry side. Yeah. And you can be all the way on the other end. And you're doing the, um, you know, collecting biometrics and monitoring wild populations and yeah. doing field work. And, you know, there, there's a there's a spectrum in between and there's people yeah. that do both. And um, well, that, yeah, and that's crazy. Yeah. Through that, there's information. Yeah. Yeah. Because like that's I, mean, I never would imagine. Them. Yeah. And that, I never would imagine growing up. You know, I used to be the I used to go out and collect things and bring it home and, you know, have like 
so many different kind of animals and then i went to college and you know went to for, for management you know and then i i got more of the conservation route you know and and then here i am with a family and this and that and now i'm like I, I just want to enjoy my animals you know but actually contribute to do it for whether it's my book or the, i might not be able to get out and have hours to go out but that doesn't mean that i can't do this or do do the book or do what i can do you know what i'm saying right you know don't let excuses limit that, you know? <laughs> yeah, and I and I, th I think social media gives you a position oh, yeah. to do it from wherever you are, you know, whatever your situation, you yeah. know, like, I mean, you, you could be limited to a wheelchair inside a building, but if you have knowledge, you can still share that knowledge, you know? Yeah. And I agree. It's, it's amazing. And it's, it's something that I never, when I, when I was a little kid with my first turtle in 1987, you know, listening to Billy Joel, like I never would have thought that we would have this ability to do what we're doing right now and share information and, you know, like watch Dan grow up from being a 10 year old to a 20 year old with guppies <laughs> and turtles and dressing up and making funny videos. I mean, it's, it's awesome. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's just something you never, you never would have thought. And, um, you know, guys like Jordan Gray, you know, everybody has these awesome little roles and they, these little places they fit in. And it's so awesome because, it, it just shows the awesome variety of people and what they can do. And it's yeah. awesome to get online and just browse all that and learn from so many different, you know, people. Yeah. And no, I, I, I definitely agree, <laughs> man. What I was going to say is um, I know I follow you on Facebook and Instagram and uh, you have a new shirt design. Do you want to talk about the shirt design and we can feature that um, in the description it's for the video? It's, it's an old shirt design. I, I came up with it in December, but it's the only shirt design, so we can call it new. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, it, I, I have it on um, Bonfire, and it's just a, it's an alligator snapping turtle logo for 2020. Um, I also do a lot of educational talks um, locally. It was part of my educational permit to have um, some native protected species here in my state. So um, one of the ones I really wanted to focus on was the alligator snapping turtle. And here in my own state, people are still eating them. People are still killing them. You know, like uh, the one, the adults that I have are all rescues that, that were confiscated from people that were hoarding turtles. Um, one was shot in the head. One of them was blind and found on the land by like uh, a hunter and the landowner wanted to eat her. So I, I ended up taking that blind turtle and modifying a graphic to kind of simulate like the shape of her and um kind of became a mascot and then um you know maybe some thousand 2021 if we're all still here then i'll do a, a different graphic but yeah alligator snapping turtle and no, it's on no, bonfire I, you gotta I'll you gotta send me the link man and i'll definitely post it i'm, I'm yeah. gonna order mine today for sure I looked, I looked at it three different times um yes yeah. black or blue I, I have the blue one i like that one a lot I, I think I got to roll with the black, man. I got, I got to roll with the black. Okay. It's white logo, <laughs> black shirt, right? Yeah, the two colors I have are black and then like a, um, I don't know what they call the blue. It's like jersey type blue. Um, I have both. I have the, the ones I have are samples, you know, all the production ones. Um, I never got any of them. I just got like a couple samples in the beginning. But they're great shirts. Um, nice. I wear them all the time. Uh, they're They're good. No, I'm so, I mean, all the, all the money, much. I don't, I don't make like profit off of them either. I marked them down as low as I could get them to sell them. And then right. anything that I get for the shirts just goes right back into the, into the turtles. So no, it, it was a good price. It was like the same, it was around the same price that I paid each for my, uh, Terrapin conservation one. It was about the same mm -hmm. price as the one I paid for world turtle day. Like it's, it's a fair price, man. If you can't pay 25 bucks for a shirt, you, you'd want to wear anyways. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's a, yeah. yeah, there's, there's a hoodie on there too, but I don't think anybody's wearing hoodies right now. Nah, man. Yeah. Hey, you should have done a mask. Oh, I should have done a mask. That would be different. Yeah. Alligator snapper <laughs> with a lure in it. Yeah. <laughs> tongue and all, man. Hey, I'm going to go ahead and uh, bring Dan. He stayed around back on for the guest that turtle. Uh, we haven't had any comments today, so I don't know if that will occur. Actually, I lied. We've had a lot of comments on Instagram. Uh, people saying, Dan is so funny. Dan, your edits are the best. Uh, Greg is the man. Arm muscle. Uh, 
I don't uh, have a lot, a lot of comments. So let me add Dan and I'll finish thing. So yeah, so what I'd like to do is share the turtle, uh, give the viewers a guess. If not, it'll be your chance to quickly guess. Does that work for you? Yeah, thumbs up. All right. So I have picked out this turtle. I don't want to say that I've gone to great lengths because that would be a lie. I literally found it while I was showing Dan the platform, but it's okay because it's a cool looking turtle. So, all right. If you Wait. show a sea turtle, I'm going to have a fit. It is not a sea turtle, but it's not far Let's off. Show, my, let's show what's on my book. I already gave a hint, hint. That ninja turtle. Do you, know, do you You guys can see it, correct? Oh, yeah. yeah, we can see it. You can't see that. I can see it. I it kind of it kind of reminds me of myself after I eat a couple slices of pizza. I, Flat? I, I've got a guess, but it's not easy to identify based on that photo. Oh, man. I, I will tell you this. So wait, you get flat after you eat pizza, man? I don't want, what kind of pizza is that? No, look, look how he's just like flopping <laughs> and playing, man. <laughs> this is in a captive situation, right? Because that's a little ramp. Um, You know what? I literally like typed the name on Google and found the first big picture I could find. I don't want to lie to you. I have two guesses <laughs> okay. on Instagram so far. Uh, I'm going to bring it back. We have some type of fly river on steroids. <laughs> it is not a fly river. Nah. Uh, another guess was a spiny soft shell. It is not a spiny soft shell. I can I can already tell Dan is already on the internet like fat ass soft <laughs> shell. Fat ass, weird looking <laughs> phallic it wasn't, it wasn't the turtle. one that was just on you know, like I think it was just posted in one of the herpetology groups or something like that for a uh, it is it is a pop shell. Is it an endangered one? It is an endangered one. Yeah. Is it the endangered one? If I'm not mistaken, it's the one that uh that is was it the one that was featured in that show? Um, um with, uh, what's his name? Well, what's the name of the show, man? It's escaping me. Extinct or alive? Or alive? Yeah, yeah. 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 I just binge watched all those Rapidus. yesterday. Raphidus, yeah. All right. That's, so it isn't that one. That's what I thought because it, I've looked at all like I've looked at like all the Raphidus photos that they have because they don't have many, and I was like, I don't recognize that one. Though. All right, it does start with a Y. Southwest Florida reptiles called it. It is the Yang Yangtze. There you go, Yangtze. giant soft shell turtle. Yeah, but that's that, yeah, that's uh, what you call it. Their scientific name. That's the Raphidus scientific name? Yeah, oh, it's uh, Raphidus Swinhoi, Swin, something like that. Swinhoi? Yeah. Yeah, hey, I, I got to admit, I, I, really, I really just looked up 25 most endangered turtles and found the one that I had no idea what it was. So <laughs> That's number one. Wait, which yeah. is, no, That's number one, I, yeah, That's I was surprised. What, what did you say number one is? I think number one right now technically is the one that he also found um, on Extinct or Alive is the Ferdinand, Ferdinand or something Spanish. Yeah, for uh, yeah, 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 um, giant tortoise because there's literally only one that they have that they found, and everything else is like I mean at least with one known. Raphidus, there's like yeah one known at least hopefully more, and then Raphidus I think there's two females in captivity. The no, the male which one died. just died? The male just died. Yeah, I remember watching it. The male died before he could. Uh, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was the male died, and then was it the female that they tried to artificially inseminate, and then she died? I think like within the year. Oh. Anyway, yeah, they had they had to let go with them. Yeah, not not great stuff. Hey, I I definitely appreciate you two coming on the show, man. It's been a pleasure. I'm glad you guys are using your influence in a positive way. Um, I'm glad you guys are, you know, have an influence and decided to have a voice and to use that voice. Um, I look forward to our future episodes where each of you will have your own episode yeah. where we can, you know, talk crap. Yeah. And who knows what we'll talk about? I mean, life's a... Uh, 
mean, I, I'm looking forward to getting a little tour of the Turtle Haven a little bit too, you know. So I mean, yeah, man, do a little live tour, a little, you know. Don't just have to say because I know he's look. He's sitting there and he's itching to just walk around. I know he is. So. Hey, the <laughs> funny thing, Greg, is Ed has been pestering me. Like, dude, we need to get Greg the Snapper Man. We need to get him on the show. Like, my favorite turtle that I don't own is out there snapping turtle. Oh, like, I need to see them. Yeah, that's one of my favorites. Oh, I got a dude, bunch man. of them. I, I was um right before you guys contacted me, I was talking with John Richards for probably thirty minutes. We were talking about alligator snappers, and uh, I was kind of showing him around, you know, the backyard and stuff that I made. So yeah, it's it's pretty cool to get to see them. They're it's sun's about to set, so they're about to get active. So <laughs> hey, I'll be looking so for cool. an Instagram live video tonight of you feeding again. Unless it's not feeding. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah, I'll have to see what I have for him. I um, I just put some clams in there. So normally when I do that, I just let them kind of find those themselves. But I could probably get some fish and do an Instagram live. So, hey, I'll be eating my salmon and watching you feed your turtle <laughs> or whatever you're feeding him. But yeah, guys, uh, we appreciate you for being on the show. Yeah. And, you know, until next Friday, where next Friday is actually going to be an interesting show. Um. We actually have a, a young lady who's going to be on the show um, on Instagram. She's known as Snake Princess. Um, and yeah, so, yeah, she's tiny. Yeah, Florida, man. Right? Yeah, she's in Florida. She's doing a lot of research. Um, we're not sure yet how much we can divulge into the research she's doing because she does work for the University of Florida. Um, but we do want to find out more. And something that was important to Ed and I was getting – um a wide spectrum of types of reptile keepers like we haven't had any uh women or young ladies on the show but like they keep reptiles too like somebody has to be a voice for them like my daughter's growing up and she wants a snake like she's not getting one as long as she lives in my house but <laughs> she needs somebody to look up to and watch on youtube you know so but yeah man that's going to be an exciting show this has been what the shell. What the? Appreciate you guys, man. Yeah, we appreciate you guys, man. Keep doing what you're doing. Stay dedicated, and hopefully, we'll have way more to share. You know, once you guys come time to for your time to shine, and you know, absolutely, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you guys. No, no problem. problem. Have a good night, y'all.